Welcome to LIBS 1810 Student Success for Higher Learning video series. Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 11, <clears throat> which is Taking Control of Your Finances. This chapter has a few objectives. They include setting realistic financial goals for college, choosing between making more money and spending less money, accepting the financial realities of college and being happy with your financial choices, discovering what kinds of jobs are more fulfilling in college and how to find them, tracking <clears throat> spending using a budget and managing your budget to stay on track, spending less money while having fun, eating well, and having a social life, using credit cards effectively without getting into too much debt, avoiding future financial problems while building a good credit score now, and finally, getting all the financial aid that you need. When we are learning our financial skills, <clears throat> it is important to set financial goals, and these need to be realistic goals. So how much money are you going to need to get through college? How much money is each semester going to cost? And this includes not just tuition and books, but also things like rent or a mortgage, transportation fees, clothing fees, food, going out, and miscellaneous expenses. You can consider getting a job and making money, or you could also look at getting a student loan. You need to learn how to spend less and how to manage a budget when you're trying to learn financial skills, and we will talk about making a budget. You also want to avoid credit card debt, because credit card debt can be very expensive. You also need to determine how you are going to finance your college expenses. Are you going to have a part-time job? Do you have family who can support you? How are you going to get your money? We're also going to talk today about scholarships, awards, and bursaries. And if you are a permanent resident, we'll also talk about OSAP, which is the Ontario Student Assistance Program. This is a government-run program that provides loans to Canadians to go to post-secondary school. So first of all, we need to determine what our financial goals are. Do you want to graduate without debt, and is this possible? For summer and for break time, what are your priorities? Is it to relax or is it to make some money? What is it that you want to do during these breaks? You also have to determine how important it is to take a full course load. Can you afford to drop a course or two so that you've got time to work so that you get out of school debt free? Also, you need to determine how important certain things are to you, such as having a nice place to live or having a nice car or having designer clothes or going out to expensive restaurants. So how important are these compared to your education? You need to sit down and again, look at your values that we studied earlier in the semester and see how important these things are to you and whether or not you can make sacrifices while you are in college. There are jobs or internships <clears throat> or co-op programs that you can participate in while you are in, on campus and studying. There are positive benefits to a part-time job or a co-op or an internship. The first of these, of course, is its Canadian experience on your resume. But it can also provide contacts for later job searches. And you'll also have employment references for your resume. Now, an internship or a co-op program depends on the program that you are in and whether or not the program supports such an endeavor. But there are factors to consider before you start working. 
So first of all, what kinds of people will you be interacting with? Will you be with fellow students? Will you be with older adults? What kind of job is it that you're looking at? Can this job actually help you for once you've graduated? The next thing to consider is, is whether the job is flexible enough that you are going to be able to manage your schoolwork as well as working and go to your classes on time and be able to stay in your class. The last thing to think about is what will you be able to say about this job on a future resume? How will this help you get a job in the future? When you're looking at finding a job, there are jobs on campus. For example, the IT department hires students every semester. But you can also find a job through friends. You can go on to Workopolis, Monster.ca, or Indeed. But you can also work for yourself. You might think about a job like tutoring or teaching kids your native language. There are lots of different jobs available but again, you have to balance the need for money with the need for your education. And when you're looking at this, you need to understand that you are going to have to make some sacrifices while you're in college. And you may need to compromise some. It is very important to reduce your expenses as well. So look around for bargains. Where can you buy food that is on sale? Where can you buy cheaper clothing? Do you really need to have a 75 inch screen TV? Also, is it possible to reduce your course load if you have to work? Reducing your course load is something that you would like to, to talk to your coordinator about or a counselor at the college. You don't want to reduce your course load and then find out that you're not taking enough courses to satisfy your visa requirements or your OSAP requirements. When we look at our spending, in the textbook on page 417 there is a chart that you can fill out that helps you understand what your spending habits are. And be honest with yourself. The other thing that you can do is you can also record your spending for a certain period of time. And be honest, include everything that you spend your money on, including that cup of coffee at Tim Hortons. Once you have figured this out, decide what spending is optional and what spending is essential. So what are your wants versus what are your needs? So for many of us, Having the internet is essential. Having money for transportation is essential. Having a brand new car is a want because we can always buy a good, reliable used car. You also need to be aware of what you spend. So you want to keep track of your receipts or again, record what you are spending. And you can look for alternatives. So maybe you like going to Starbucks, but instead of getting a caramel macchiato, just get a regular coffee. It's cheaper and it's still coffee. When you're going shopping, you also want to plan ahead to avoid impulse spending. Impulse spending is the spending that we do when we see something and think, ooh, I really would really like that, and so we buy it. Grocery stores are terrible for impulse spending, as are many drug stores. When you go up to the cash register, there are magazines, there's junk food, chocolate bars are my downfall, or a bag of potato chips. So this is impulse spending. So have a list and try to stick to it. Also, be smart about what you are spending. Do you really need the most expensive pair of winter boots? Or are there better boots at a cheaper price somewhere else? Some tips for success in terms of financial planning. 
and spending less or making your own lunches and snacks. Food on campus is very expensive. So you can look at making your own lunches and carrying your own snacks as a way to save money. You can also read newspapers and magazines online. You can use the Conestoga College Library to read newspapers. If you're on campus, you can also get a copy of the record for free. The record distributes this to students on campus. You can also, instead of subscribing to cable or to an on-demand service, watch TV programs online for free. A lot of them can be found on YouTube. Use free Wi-Fi whenever possible, but make sure you are protecting your identity. You can shop at thrift stores, such as Value Village or Goodwill or the Salvation Army shops because thrift stores often have very good deals. You can also, during the summer months and the warmer months, check out yard sales or garage sales. Wherever possible, you want to avoid the automatic teller machine fees. If you use the automatic teller at your own bank, you can often use it for free a certain number of times a month. If you use an ATM at a restaurant or a bar, you're going to pay very high fees, so you want to avoid those. When you're looking at larger purchases, such as a new laptop or a new desktop or a new TV, look around, compare prices, compare what you want versus what it has, and then wait a few days. This helps us avoid buying the biggest and the best. The final and best thing that you can do is to avoid failing classes. As an international student, you know how expensive classes are. But even as a permanent resident, classes are expensive. So you want to avoid failing them at all costs. If you've never made a budget before, it's very important to make sure that you follow some of the basics. And there are many apps that you can use. If you look at the PowerPoint slides themselves, you'll notice that I have a link for a budget calculator or an expense calculator, and these were created by the Government of Canada. They're completely free to use, and the government does not track your use of it. But when you're creating a budget, you want to list all your sources of income that you get monthly. If you don't have a source of income that comes in monthly, do you have one that comes in quarterly, every six months, once a year, or are you relying on loans? You need to make sure that you are including all of that money. Then you need to calculate how much money you spend on a monthly basis. So again, if you've never done a budget before, you want to spend a few weeks recording everything and keeping track of your spending and the money coming in so that you know when it's time to sit down to a budget what your expenses are. Budgets are never perfect the first time out, even the second or third or fourth time. You may find that you have to change your budget on a regular basis or adjust it. And you want to make sure that there's more money coming in and you want to make sure that money is not going out faster than the money coming in. You also want to try to balance your budget. And by balancing your budget, you want to make sure that you have a little bit left over each month that can be put into savings. The Government of Canada recommends that you have at least three months of expenses in a bank account so that should an emergency arise, you are going to be okay for at least three months. There are a lot of reasons why people spend too much. One of them that's for students is if you go from working full time to being back in school again, it can be hard to cut back because you've fallen into certain habits. 
So maybe a couple of times a month you go out to a nice restaurant or you have a very nice car or you buy yourself designer clothes or expensive clothes. As a student, you're going to have to go back and rethink about your spending habits. Another way that people spend too much is using credit cards or using a debit card and not paying attention to how much you're actually spending. We also have easy access to cash now. Credit cards, debit cards, things like Apple Pay make it so easy to use our money and there are temptations everywhere. We have a saying in Canada called keeping up with the Joneses. What this means is if our neighbor buys a new car, we have to buy a new car that's as good or better than theirs. You want to avoid this kind of temptation because it winds up leading to overspending. It's also important to remember that we often buy things to feel good. There's actually a term called retail therapy that people engage in. And if they're upset or they're depressed or they're sad, people will go shopping. If you are this type of person, you want to make sure that when the emotions are running high, you don't go shopping. But again, if you're online shopping and you're looking at spending something, spending money on something that you think you would like, leave it a couple of days and see whether or not you still want that when you go back to the site. Now, spending money can lead to financial problems and financial trouble. You can wind up in a lot of debt. One of the things is an unbalanced budget. So again, you want to keep on top of your budget and you want to keep adjusting it as needed. One of the problems also is using savings for things that we buy on a regular basis. So instead of saving money, we go out and we buy a new TV, for example, or we buy a more expensive computer that we, than we need. Another danger is not making the minimum payments on credit cards or using our overdraft at the bank because this winds up costing us a lot of money. And we'll talk about credit scores and the value of a good credit score in a few minutes because a credit score, a good credit score, can positively affect the interest rates that you're paying on your credit cards and also what you can borrow at the bank. Not having savings is also a problem because if an emergency arises, where are you going to get the money from? You need to make sure as well that you know what your total debt is because if you don't, you can wind up going into so much debt that it's very difficult to get out and you might even have to declare bankruptcy which again is a negative effect on your credit score. Finally, not cutting or getting rid of enough optional expenses can lead to financial problems. If you're one that enjoys going out for a cup of coffee every day, or you enjoy eating out at restaurants a couple of times a week, keep track of how much that is costing you each month and see how much of that you can cut down on. Now we've talked a little bit about saving and there are benefits to saving. The first one is being prepared for an emergency. So if something happens, you have access to money that's not a credit card. You can also take advantage of compound interest. Now interest rates are not very high at the bank so it's best to look at something like a high interest savings account that if you leave the money in, the longer it's there, the more interest you're going to make. Having savings can also help you launch your career. Something as simple as having enough money to buy a good suit to go to interviews can help. And also, Having savings allows you to be flexible for the future. 
So if you graduate from university or college with a lot of debt, you might have to take the first job that becomes available. However, if you have savings in the bank, you'll be able to sit back and decide which possible job you would like to take. And you may wind up with a better job than the first one that comes along. Now we've talked about the dangers of credit cards, but credit cards can also benefit you. Because in case of an emergency, there are funds available. We can often get cash advances. Also, we use travel or we use credit cards to book our travel and to make reservations. We can make purchases online, but it also helps build a credit rating. And we'll talk about the credit rating in just a minute. But it is important to make sure that you avoid credit card debt. So one of the things you can look at is paying with cash when you can. Or if you have a credit card that you get points for something on and you prefer using that, make sure that you make the minimum payment every month or if possible, pay off the balance each month. You can also use your debit card instead of a credit card. And again, you want to make sure that you pay your full balance every month, if at all possible, on your credit cards. It's not a good idea to get cash advances on your credit card because this costs a lot of money in interest. However, occasionally credit cards do offer cheap or low interest rates in order to borrow money and consolidate your debt. So if that is an option available to you and you find yourself in a lot of debt, this is an option to look at. The next bit of advice is to not use more than one credit card. This is because if you have a lot of credit cards, it can be difficult to keep track of how much money you've spent on all of your credit cards. And it's important to also keep the receipts for your credit card purchases because you'll want to compare your purchases and your receipts with your credit card bill each month to make sure that the charges that are on the credit card are yours. Identity theft is becoming a real problem. So you want to make sure that no one has access to your credit card. And if, a, if nothing else is working, stop carrying your credit cards with you. This will help you avoid the temptation. Now, a credit score, as we talked earlier, is something that the banks use and lending organizations such as credit cards use. And your credit score is based on your credit history. It's based on how often you pay your credit cards and how much you pay. It's based on how many credit cards or how many loans you have and a few other things. And credit scores are important because credit scores affect how much money you can borrow and what interest rates you're going to be charged. So other things that affect your credit score are current and past credit card accounts, your history of, and balance of payments, your history of late or missed payments, inquiries into your credit status. So this happens when you apply for a loan or you apply for a new credit card. Bankruptcy or mortgage foreclosures also affect your credit score and repayment of student loans. Now it is important to build a credit score in Canada so that you are able to borrow money as cheaply as possible. But we'll talk more about credit scores in class. If you've never looked at your credit score before, there are two different organizations that are used in Canada. There is Equifax and TransUnion. Each bank in Canada uses one or the other. You can go into either Equifax or TransUnion 
and periodically check your credit score. Or you can also enroll and pay a monthly fee and either of these organizations will keep track of your credit score and also alert you to any unusual activity. And again, if you're reading the PowerPoint slides, the additional help button will give you more information for other organizations that you can use. As I mentioned before, identity theft is becoming a real problem in North America. People steal credit card numbers or debit card numbers and they use those to make illegal purchases. So are there are ways to prevent identity theft. The first is never put any document with personal or financial information into the garbage or the recycle. It's a good idea to invest money in a paper shredder and use that to get rid of any documents. You also want to make sure that you review your bank statements and credit card bills very carefully every month. And on the telephone, never give out your social insurance number or credit card numbers or sensitive information unless you know the person you're talking to. Don't answer phone calls or don't give out information with phone calls from people claiming that they are from a credit card company or from the government. The government and credit card companies will never ask you for these personal numbers, so don't give them out. Then finally, if you're using Wi-Fi, don't use your online bank and don't make any online purchases if it's a public Wi-Fi system because there's somebody out there who's going to try to steal your information. The last bit of information I wanted to talk about are the types of financial aid that you can get while you are going to college. For Canadian students or Ontario students or for students who have their permanent residency, you can apply for OSAP, the Ontario Student Assistance Program, and you can get a loan from the government to pay for your tuition. The government determines, though, how much money they are going to give you. They may not give you enough to get through school, so you're going to have to have some other form of finances available. You can also look at getting a loan from a bank, but do be aware that any school-related loans and OSAP carry very high interest rates compared to most other loans. You can also apply for scholarships or grants. If you go to Conestoga College's homepage, so www.conestogac.on.ca, if you go to the admissions page, you will find the Student Financial Services button. And if you go here, you see that there is a tab for OSAP and aid, there is also a tab for awards and for work study. This is a great resource to find out if you can get extra money to go to college. When you're applying for financial aid, you want to talk to the college's financial aid office to find out what's available. You also want to pay attention to what the dates are that you need to apply by and start your application early and make sure you get in ahead of the deadline. Also, do some online research about scholarships that you may qualify for. And don't borrow more money than you need. Because again, remember that the interest rates for student loans tend to be higher than other loans. So a couple of takeaways from this are you want to make sure that you are using a budget. You want to avoid using credit cards and winding up in financial difficulty. You want to make sure that you try to have money in savings. You want to establish a credit rating. And if you need, balance school and work. 
So I hope this has helped you and that you are able to understand a little bit more the financial requirements of going to college.